The law requires that both parties support their children. And dads, you're making a contribution to the household of the mother who's providing all of the financial uh, living situation for the child that you guys created. Um, moms, so the law makes two presumptions in the best interest of a child to have support from both parents as though the parties were still together. And it also makes a, an, a, an assumption or a presumption, I guess I should say that um, it's in the best interest of both children for both parents to be in their lives. Now, uh, I've been doing this hearing for almost 19 years. I get most, I've seen anything and everything there is to see. Um, unfortunately, I know there are a lot of strained relationships. It's very unfortunate for the child, you know, honestly, as a, as a judge and a mom, uh, you know, the relationship between the parties is not as important to me as the ability to co-parent those beautiful children that you have. And it always challenges me as a judge when people don't navigate to try to figure out how to co-parent. I had a case that was going on for five months. The mom was like, no, lock him up, lock him up, lock him up. But I finally was going to say, okay, he can't get on his feet. He's got five kids. I'll issue the warrant. And then she comes and says, you know, I hear, I hear, I hear you. I realized, you know, watching the news, you always talk about, it. I used to be in juvenile court, the, the most common, even though everybody thinks they're doing a great job alone, raising their child, or they don't like the person, even though they had a child with them, that she finally came around and said, you're right. My child needs both of us. And I'm just holding my child back because I'm mad at him and he's not doing things the way I think he should be done. But I will invite you to be open-minded in these proceedings. I can't handle any things of visitation. And, you know, I can't control that. But fathers, if you do want to see your child, you don't have to have uh, the permission of the custodial parent. You can go and file a petition to legitimate your child. You don't have to have an attorney. You just file it and the court's going to give you visitation. And then you have to make a decision to exercise that visitation. I think that's what most moms are upset. They're very protective of protecting their child from being hurt from the fathers. And so if you're not in your child's life, moms are just trying to go in a protective mode and say, I can't let my child's father just come in and out of their lives, you know, when they feel like it's okay or when we're not getting along. So with that being said, I'm just giving you a nugget. It's not about, it's not about, it's a protective mechanism. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's controlling, but most often it's a protective mechanism, but this isn't family court today. I can't navigate fathers deciding to be fathers, but if you choose to, and you really love your child, you can either work it out with the mom saying, look, I know I hurt you or we have our differences or you hurt me, but yeah, let, let, let's take a step up and try to see, I really want to be in my child's life. But if you're not going to step up, don't do it because you're just hurting your child worse. Okay. That's my little rant about caring about those poor babies that don't have both parents in their lives. Um, I always ask you to look at your childhood. You know, when you were little, if you just had a mom, wouldn't you have liked your father to be there for you? Maybe that could, something that can trigger your heart and say, okay, I do want to make this right for my child. Totally up to you. And totally up to the parents to work that out. So anyway, you could file a petition with the court to legitimate your child. You don't have to have an attorney. Um, so the child support, there's always a, a past due amount quite often, but I can't deal with the past due amount. If it's a substantial amount, uh, you'll have to contact child support and they will work on a, a repayment plan with the dad or they can file a contempt. But to me, I'm looking at if a crime is being committed. So dads, let me tell you, what does that mean if you're the non-custodial parent? You're committing a crime. Now, let me start by saying people always have their own underlying agreements, right? People have where mom says, well, just do this for me, maybe, and I won't, you know, file the warrant or something triggers. I'm like, well, you're not doing what I asked you to do, so I'm filing a criminal warrant. That's not in the mom's control to decide if you're going to be arrested. It's in my control. And I have been doing this so long that I know that if you give the, if you give, if you're given the opportunity to step up, get a job, do the right thing, let the money come out of your paycheck, things mellow out and they get better. So that's my goal as a judge. I don't want anybody thinking I'm here to punish anybody. I'm not here to just lock somebody up because that's not going to help anything. Um, but if that's my last resort, after giving you opportunities to get on track, then I have to issue the warrant. If I issue the warrant, you'll be on um, probation in state court until your child um, is 18. We're going to go through the proceedings. All I ask is that today, everybody be respectful. I will not tolerate anybody presenting any negative information. We're streaming live on YouTube. The public has the right to observe our court proceedings. I am not going to be a participant in, a, in any type of um, ill will towards another person in my courtroom. I'm going, you guys are going to be respectful to each other. You're not going to call anybody's um, uh, anybody, any inappropriate names or anything like that or down the father or down the mother. It's not happening. Everybody's going to be respectful, okay? If not, I will, will remove you from court. Please do not record or take any pictures of these proceedings. Please do not post this on social media. Dead be dead. The judge had to tell him. If anybody's, there's some network that observes our court proceedings, but you're not supposed to be recording and posting. These are personal matters with people's lives and you are not permitted um, to record any of our proceedings. So please don't disrespect my court or, uh, um, or, or the personal lives of the participants before me by posting this and airing it live on your YouTube channel. There's a, uh, a couple of people that are doing that and it's not appropriate, but certainly as litigants, please don't do that, okay? Because I can hold you in contempt, which means I could issue a warrant. All right, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and put everybody in a breakout room, except we're going, we're going to keep Miss Lloyd and um, 
Uh, Mr. Rose. Give me one moment to pull up your case and look at my notes. It's been a while since I've seen you both. All right, so it looks like I had mom sign the warrant back in November 16, 2023, but payments were coming in. So I rescheduled the case from January to look at the status and see what's going on. Um, the case had to be rescheduled, I believe. So here we are today, Mr. Rhodes, you're supposed to be paying 217 a month, I think, I, and you have a past due amount of 1500. If that's accurate, that's not so, so bad. But the issue is the consistent payments. And it looks like you've gone back down toward not paying consistently. And uh, let's see, when was this originally filed? Hold on one second. I, I already signed the warrant, so I'm not sure I have much of a choice. I didn't have, I mean, mom signed the warrant, but I haven't signed it yet because um, uh, there were payments being made, but those payments are not uh, coming in anymore. They're very minimal. So it's kind of back to square one. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you can unmute. What's going on, sir? Um, remember what I told you uh, about my background, the pending case I'm dealing with. So oh, it's been yeah. hard. Yeah, it's been hard for me to get a job. Like the job, the last job I had after they fired my manager who hired me, they let a lot of us go. So it was hard for me to get a job. I just got a job recently, literally. So in about two weeks, the the money gonna start rolling back in, and they're gonna start taking it back out of my check. I literally okay. just got a job. Okay. Um, you don't have to tell me where you work, but tell me what type of employment. Oh, delivery. Okay, with. With a company or a large company, small company or what? Large company. Okay. Um, can you do you know how to put in the chat what that company do you live in DeCab or Fulton? No, ma'am. Where do you live? What county? Um County's right there. Oh, okay. Um, okay, hold on a second. Now, um, just tell me a little bit so I can understand, like how are you supporting yourself during these times where um oh okay. Uh well that's a good job and hopefully you could keep that. Um uh, did you go through a company to get that job? Because a lot of people tell yes, me Yes, I had to go through a company, yes. Okay, and what's the name of that company that you went through? Because then I can confirm and put in my notes that you went through a company to obtain that, that employment. One second. Um, okay. and when did you start with them? Um, I just signed my paperwork uh, yesterday. Do you have any paperwork now or is it all on computer? It's in my email. Uh, thank you. Uh, um, everything. Okay. Um, so I have not signed the warrant yet, but mom already signed the warrant. Um, I understand the, the underlying situation is pretty serious. And I think mom knows that what you're going through as well. Um, I mean, just for the benefit that we'll be able to have an income deduction order, I like to go ahead and get that started looks like you were working and you were paying but like you made a payment in september and she mom hasn't received any support in october november you made a very small minimal payment and then in january you made a, a very small payment so pretty much mom's been going out without support for october november december january now we're in february so it is a legal basis for me to issue the warrant so i will make a note here that um, i'm going to sign the warrant um, unless a payment is received in two weeks and then there's consistent payments um, I know mom's probably like, well, just arrest him, but that's not going to do anything to help you get money for your baby. So I, I understand it gets frustrating. Uh, when will you start working with them, Mr. Rhodes? Hopefully Monday. Monday. Okay. So Monday. And then are you going to be getting paid weekly or every two weeks? Bi-weekly. Bi-weekly. Okay. So the issue is, is that, but I was asking you, like, how are you financially supporting yourself right now? I haven't. I really haven't. Are you living with family? Yes. So your family's providing for you. Yes. I take it it's a mom. Yes, it like that. Okay. Um, you know, I always it's troublesome. I know that, you know, I know you have that background case, which is pretty serious. That um, I don't know, you know, have you been arrested already and indicted on that case, or is it still well, the case just now being indicted this well last year, January. Okay. Um case is seven years old. So seven years you've been waiting to go to trial. Yes, ma'am. Well, that really shouldn't. That's just an arrest. That shouldn't be stopping you from getting employment. It's pending. So it's showing pending on my background. So jobs oh, turn me down. Oh, OK. I got. Yeah, that's pretty serious. And that would be hard to get a job. Um, but um, all right. Well, 
Uh, let me put you in a breakout room with Ms. Arena Camarillo so she, she, you can give her the name of the logistics company. We're going to submit the paperwork. But the issue is, Mr. Rhodes, as you already know, as soon as I don't know what, you know, you've been going on without money, but I, I have to sign the warrant if I don't see the payments. I keep saying that. And I know moms get, uh, get frustrated. But the point is, is that I can lock you up and put you in jail and then you'll be released. But um, Miss Lloyd, the case won't, it takes sometimes up six to eight months to go to court. Whereas if I can get an income deduction order and have the money coming out of his paycheck immediately, um, then at least you'll have consistent money coming out. And I know you're frustrated. I'm sure you are, but I, I want you to understand the bigger picture for me as a judge. So uh, what I want to do in this case is have you meet with Miss Serena Camarillo in a breakout room, let her get your information. But Mr. Rhodes, the most important thing is that when you get that first paycheck, your child support is not a lot. It's like 292 plus the repay. So let me just put that in. Uh, 292 plus the repay toward the arrearage. Let's just focus on the primary payment right now. And so when you divide it by two, you have to voluntarily pay $150 a month to child support when you get your first check. I mean, I, mean, I was going to clear, I was going to clear all that out when I got my taxes anyway. Oh, well, they're probably going to intercept your taxes. I mean, that's if, fine. That's what I was planning on doing anyway. I mean, you don't, you only owe $1,500. So I don't know how much your taxes are. So if, if you consent to the intercept and that can, uh, that can take that out, that would be good. It won't be past due. And then you could just stay current, but you don't have a lot. I mean, compared to cases that, you know, one case I have is 22,000. Another, well, the, a lot of dads don't have that much today, but um, so when have you filed your taxes yet? Um, no, ma'am. I'm waiting for the, the guy to get back with me. Okay, so you will have a tax intercept, Miss Lloyd, where you will receive all of pretty much all of your past due. They'll hold his taxes. That takes a bit of a while. And then your first paycheck that you receive, when you receive it, you have to pay $150 directly into the registry of the court. And then you have to keep paying $150 per pay period until it comes directly out of your paycheck. A lot of dads think, oh, I, they didn't take it out, so that must be okay. No, you have to pay it until it comes out of your paycheck. So that means okay. in two weeks, I would think, are you going to get paid in two weeks? If you start Monday, you should, right? Yes, because they they uh just passed. They uh they just got paid this week. So. Oh, okay. okay. So in two weeks, we'll have a first paycheck, and that would be enough full-time employment. Are you full-time? Part-time. Part-time. How many hours? Uh, 30. And, oh, uh, okay. Do you know what you get paid an hour? 18.75. Oh, wow. Okay. That's okay. So that means you'll be getting before taxes about a thousand eighty. After taxes, probably seven hundred, eight hundred. Um, once they take out everything, then there shouldn't be any problem with you paying one fifty. I mean, I'm I, I'm glad you got a job. It's just and and Miss Lloyd, you know, I want to get money for your child for you, and so I think this is a good opportunity to intercept your your paycheck. Go ahead and give you what I was going to sign the warrant today because you don't have payments coming in for almost four months. Um, but if you're uh, if you have a new job, we can get your license reinstated. We can get it. But if you quit your jobs, that's part of the issue. If you're quitting because you don't want to make child support. You know, I always think as a judge, what man doesn't want to work? I mean, that makes no sense. So who wants to not work unless you're working under the table somewhere? So let me let you get with Miss Serena Camarillo. And before we do that, in case Miss Lloyd has to go to work, um, uh, let me hear from Miss Lloyd. Miss Lloyd, I know you're probably frustrated and don't want to give him another chance, but now he's got a good job with uh, Amazon and the money's going to be coming in, I hope, in two weeks. And then I keep saying I'm going to issue the warrants, but now we could take the money out of his paycheck again. And then you have a tax intercept coming to give you all the money. So um, it, I think things will get a bit better in the next couple months or so. But Miss Lloyd, I'll hear from you, please, if you have anything you need to share other than the frustration that he's not paying, hasn't paid. Okay, that's fine. Um, I mean, so will we keep having, um, one second, sorry. Um, will we keep going, coming to court so to make sure that the payments are consistent and everything? Absolutely. I can't answer. She can call. Her. Okay, okay. So I just wanted to make sure we'll just keep coming to court because yeah, it has been about that he worked for the job and everything or get okay. paid under the table. So yeah, I, just like, I, I agree. Let me put this here. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, Dad, let me go ahead and mute for a minute. Let's see. So Dad has a new job with Amazon. She'll pay uh, directly to uh, uh, DCSS 150 each pay period starting in two weeks. On March 22nd, we come back, you should have made those two payments. Um, so you'll be making a payment on the 23rd and you'll be making a payment on March 8th. I'm resetting the case to March 22nd. Actually, I want that income deduction order to put in. So March 22nd, and then we're going to check the status of the income deduction order. Yes, Jason. 
Yes. I'm I'm sorry, there is no court on March twenty second. It's on March twenty ninth. Oh, okay. You changed the date. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, good. We'll see you on the 29th, sir. Um, it looks like you have a good opportunity to make some good money, provide for yourself and take care of your child. And um, so we'll see. You'll have the payment on March 28th and March 22nd, and then we'll reset court to the 29th. Um, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. And I think that's reasonable. I mean, even at 30 hours, you should be able to make sufficient money to be able to take care you know, of your financial needs. And I don't have to issue a warrant and you don't have that lingering over you as well. Um, so um, uh, as you can see, you know, I'm really trying. So we're going to reset the case to the 29th and 329. So please put that on your calendar. Miss Lloyd, we'll see you then too. Okay. I'm going to let Mr. Ms. Camarillo and Mr. Rhodes go into a breakout room so we can get his employment information, Miss Lloyd, so we could take the money directly out of his paycheck as soon as we get the information to his HR. Okay. Okay. All right. And, um, I'm sorry. And if you had a question, you could go ahead and unmute Ms. Lloyd. Thank you for respecting the court. Yes, ma'am. Um, I do have a question. Um, so once, um, that is good though. So um, I am, I'm okay with that. Uh, once me and the child support office were working on um, adding the three months and then like you said, the has doing everything. So will you keep it at the 150 or will he have to pay? Cause they added on the um, three months. You know what, just to get him back started again, I'm mm -hmm. just going to, pay the, the basic amount and then once okay. it starts to the paycheck they're going to submit an order for everything that needs to come out okay all right okay all right sounds okay, good yes, okay, okay thank, thank you. you okay we'll see you on the 29th you're excused and miss camarillo and mr rhodes you guys are you the breakout room and we'll get your information for your employee okay, now he is not here mr graham i have not been able to reach him okay i'll pull up for application is this the first time this one's on the calendar oh wow yeah there's been no support for a while over a year. So on, on, on January 5th, we sent an application to come sign the warrant on this case. Is that that's why I show in the docket notes. But I don't, okay, I don't see let me see what went on with this. Yeah, because I don't have any docket notes and I don't see I don't see an order in this case. A child support order. Let's see if I, oh, let me go to imaging again. Sorry. Yeah. This is the first time I show her on this on the calendar. Yeah, application. But, yeah, and I don't see the application. You don't see it uploaded to the file. Let me go back and see. Mm -hmm. No, I don't. Well, we're, before I bring her in, are you showing any information of any employment or anything on this case, which is uh, on Mr. Graham? I'm showing that in December 18th, they sent out an FIW to an employer, um, but we have not heard back. Okay. So he has yeah. a page. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Okay. The application is under images under accused. Okay. Let me look again under Mr. Graham. Um, let's see. You submitted this application. You have a child support order. Um, you gave us a, a room number for Mr. Graham and you don't have any phone numbers because we generally, if we don't receive response, because I guess he's living in a hotel, we have yeah. to be able to contact the non-custodial parent. So you don't have a phone number? I gave anything? the phone number to the clerk yesterday when she called me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Um, and uh -huh. she probably so, Miss um, Stark, you tried to call him to, and you haven't. Yes, yes, Judge. I've been trying to call that number since yesterday. I tried again as uh, about, probably about 20 minutes ago. No one's answering it. Okay. So, what's the background on him, Miss Robinson? Is he living in a hotel? Um, as far as I know, that's the last place. Um, he is a registered sex offender, so of course he has to keep his stuff up to date. Um, that's the last thing that I knew where he was living. Um, but he has not um done anything in terms of our doctor. Well, do you have any communication with him or? No, because he's inconsistent. So I cut ties from him having any access to my daughter. Okay, our daughter, you know, I know you don't wanna say that, but it's our daughter. Let's see, uh, come and sign. My, my, the struggle I'm having is our, our procedures kind of require that I, before I issue a warrant that he's at least aware, but um, let me see, you're saying, so you don't even, cause they, you, they're saying that, um, I mean, you're saying you don't know where he is. You haven't received any support since August. Um, I mean, yeah. I know he has to be around somewhere. I mean, he cuts hair, he drives trucks. That's little things that I know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my mom, she was friends with him on Facebook. So she said that she would see him on there. But um, aside from that, no, we don't have any, any kind of dealings whatsoever. But he's well okay. aware that he's court ordered to pay child support. So he hasn't oh, paid sure. anything since August. 
Okay. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do, I have to give him one opportunity to come to court before I issue a warrant. So what we're going to do, this is the first time appearing. Um, can you leave, uh, Mr. Starks, is that a, his number allow you to leave a message? No, it just constantly rings. It doesn't allow, allow a message. Okay. So Ms. Robinson, where did you obtain uh, that telephone number? That's the number that I've always had for him. Mm. Unless he's changed his number. Mm. But we aren't sure that he received the notice to come to court because we you think that's last known place. Do you have a, a parent, a mother, a sister, or someone that we could send the court notice to? Because I can't just mm -hmm. issue a warrant. I have to, it's required that I give him notice. Well, that I should be, like I said, him being a registered sex offender, his stuff should always be up to date. So that was the last place that I've known him to be at. Um, I'm not sure. But this was me putting out the child abandonment warrant was like my last final straw, only simply because he's well aware he's supposed to be paying and he doesn't. He doesn't try to do anything. So mm -hmm. and I feel like child support personally, I feel like they give too many chances. Because I mean, 4,000, he is negative like 4,000 some dollars. So it's like, at what point in time does he actually have to go to jail? In my book, in, in my head, I, I'm just trying to figure out because I didn't make my child by myself. So it looks like they submitted an income deduction order back in December, but nothing has come through so that he tried to find a job. Um, and my only concern is he hasn't received notice. You can't confirm that he lives at that address. You can't confirm his, uh, that that's the last phone number. If, if you could just like you don't know his mother, his sister, you don't know any family member that we could send the court notice to to make sure he has le really received notice. His family is in South Carolina. His mother has passed away. Mm -hmm. So I know he has an aunt and uncle that stay here. Um, but like, again, I don't see why his address wouldn't still be the same because as a registered sex offender, you're required to have your okay, address. Okay, but Ms. Robinson, we're, we're, we're streaming nationally. Just stop saying that for me, okay? I, I don't want to put out there he's a sex offender. I'm glad he's not in court, but I have it. You don't have to keep saying that. Just okay. because we're, we're screening, I understand. And as a registered sex offender, they they their, their lives are, he's convicted and their lives are, are very challenging because they can't stay. That's why I'm saying I have to have notice, but um, I'll reset it one more time. And if he doesn't come, I'll go ahead and issue the warrant. I just have to give him the opportunity to see if my clerk can call him. You don't have an address uh, that you can confirm. Um, so when is the last time you know that he's been at that address, Ms. Robinson? Um, I'm From what I've known, he's always been at that address. So he saw my daughter probably last year sometime. Oh, it's been um, over a year. Yeah. So like, like I said, he doesn't see her. He doesn't have contact with her. I know he would probably say, oh, well, she has me blocked, but I have him blocked because he's inconsistent. So, I mean, I'm not sure, but that's the last known address. He's been there for years. So I don't know anything about him, you know, leaving that place. Okay. But mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't know. I kind of, this one. Well, I mean, this, it, it is, it, sure. the issue is I can't issue warrant without knowing something. And if you have him blocked, which I understand, but you're blocking him, doesn't give me the ability to say, okay, well, you know, at least she sent him a text and let him know about the court date or something. Sometimes there has to be something to confirm that he received notice of the hearing. And I'm trying to navigate that. Um, so. Uh, so are you blocking him out of concern for your daughter or are you blocking him because you don't want him to have any contact with your daughter? I don't want him to have any contact. He's inconsistent. I'm not going to allow a man to come in and out my child's life. Well, I mean, I said that I said that in the opening, so I do yeah. understand that. So let me just reset it one more time. Um, if he fails to come, then we'll issue the warrant. Let me just put that in there, okay? Uh, uh, and um, the income deduction was submitted in December. Right. We'll see the update. If there's no income coming in on the 29th, uh, Ms. Robinson will issue the warrant, okay? okay. So All right, we'll see on the 29th. Take care. To pay $75 you. You off, so I wouldn't have to issue the warrant. Yes. And it looks like you've been paying some payments of $50 and recently $75. I'll pay I've been paying more than that, Your Honor. I paid a lot. I've been paying since um, I paid 150 then I paid another. I've been paying every week. Okay. Well, let me see. I, they only show me the last three payments. I'll let. So, are you working now or? Yes, ma'am. I'm working at Fetch. What's Fetch? Oh, restaurant? It's a, no, it's a package delivery company. Okay. Can you get. Okay. Are you driving right now? I'm parking. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm heading to work. Yeah, we should be. I'm finna park in McDonald's. Okay. Your Honor, the numbers that I have are the updated numbers. So, I mean, it, it does look like it's true. He's paying every week, um, you know, starting in January 5th. So January 5th, there was a payment of $89. January 22nd, $48. January 26th, $47. February 2nd, $70. So, Mr. Roseberry, do you have another child support order? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so it's splitting. How many how many child support orders do you have? There's one that that is splitting with. Oh, okay. So you have to kind of pay double the amount. So um, this fetch is that a private company? Ma'am, it's like it's like fetch. It's like a it's like Amazon. But do you who gives you the jobs? Do you find your own? Like no, I get through fetch. It's, I go to a warehouse every day. And what do you do there? Um, deliver packages. So you pick up the packages from Fetch and then they, they pay you to deliver them? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so they take taxes out of your paycheck and everything? Yes. Okay. So there's there shouldn't be any reason. Okay. So you're doing, you're paying consistently, but each mom's only getting 50. So you have to kind of up it a little bit, but you are paying. It's just splitting. So you're not paying the full amount. So the goal is that 70, closer to $70 a week. And it looks like this past week, you may have paid 150 and it's split between the two moms. And that, okay. that's probably the more reasonable amount. But what county are what, what county do you live in? I, I live in Fulton. Fulton, okay. But with this Fetch program, I'm just trying to understand. You go there; they've hired you under the job of Fetch. Yes, ma'am. It's on the Fetch. Yeah, it's okay. on the Fetch. Okay. And you pick up the packages, you deliver them, and then they pay you. Use your own car, but then yes, they they pay you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that means we should be able to get the information to take it directly out of your paycheck. Until it comes out of your paycheck, you're doing you're doing better. You're paying. You know what I mean. You're not. I don't have to issue a warrant. Now we haven't heard from mom. Have you spoke with her lately? Do you know? I spoke. I spoke to her. Um, I test her. Um, I think I test her Monday to make sure she get the the money that I had sent in. Okay. Did she but respond? You responded to me, but I okay. ain't. Hit, that's the that's last time I heard from her on Monday. Okay, so we were not able to. Oh, oh, with my court paperwork. We weren't able to reach her today. She's not here, but I can't quite dismiss the case. I've been having it open for so long. You're doing so much better. But I, before I close the case, I need to just see if we can get an income deduction order for it to come directly out of your paycheck. And then I'll okay. dismiss I'll dismiss the case. But if you can continue to pay weekly, at least you're paying something weekly. But whatever you pay, the 150 if possible to pay that weekly, then you're doing better for paying both moms at least $70, $75 a week, which will get you exactly where you need to be for child support. I'm going to put you in a breakout room with Miss. Uh, uh, Camarillo, she's the attorney for, for child support. And let's let her get your information. Just be reminded, you have to pay until you see it coming out of your paycheck. All right, we'll put you guys in, in a breakout room so we don't advertise all your personal information, okay? I do. Okay. okay. All right, briefly. I'm going to meet you first, Ms. Simmons. All right, so you guys have a four-year-old at the time the application was filed. Mom lives in DeKalb County with the minor child. Dad's under a child support order to pay $325 plus a $65 a month repay toward the $1,900 arrearage. Um, Dad, you paid uh, 322 voluntarily back in June, uh, no payment in July, August, September. Then you paid another 379 in October, the no payment in November, December, January. And there was a uh, a small payment of $70 uh, or 75. They took out fees that was paid this month. But though, but uh, so that's why moms filed the child support abandonment warrant. Um, so, Mr. Denson, you. You have sporadic payments. Of course, I was sharing with you, if you don't pay consistently within 30 days, then a warrant could be issued for your arrest. So my goal as a judge is to get you consistent on your payments. My first question is, are you employed? Um, No, man. Well, I'm self-employed. I'm a photographer, but I'm not employed like with the company or anything. Okay, so entrepreneurship is tough when it comes to child support because then you're dependent on, you know, getting jobs so if you're not consistent i always encourage dads to get a part-time job to take care of the child support let it come out of your paycheck and then if you meaning if you're being a photographer if you're not making enough money um uh just doing your photography then you're going to have to do something else to supplement your income because you know i get it if you're uh, self-employed it's not always consistent with the with the gigs or the jobs so tell me um uh you know you paid the full payment in two months in last year that I can see in June and, and in October, but then nothing since then. So basically there is a basis for issuing a warrant unless we get you back on track and get you consistent with child support. Right. Um, okay, no problem. Uh, so can you tell me what's going on, please? Um, yes. Um, basically, you did see me fall off from my payments after, uh, like you said, June, July. Um, that's my fault. Uh, like I was um, talking to my mom about it. Uh, my child, you know, she had no reason for me to, you know, stop paying. You know, she had, she had, was going on between me and her mother. You know, I wasn't trying to take that out on my child. But what happened was her mother did reach out to me before school. My daughter was about to start pre-K and asked me, could I help take care of the um school uniforms? 
And I did help her take care of the school uniforms. And I just wanted to sit down and talk with her so we could figure out a schedule so I could be involved with my um, daughter starting school. Um, my daughter, of course, started school. I never seen a picture of her in her uniform. And the few times I did get to talk to her last year, my daughter asked, you know, Dad, when you coming to get me? Can you come get me from school? Uh, we're having parent day. And I was like, um, you know, that's something me and your mother have to talk about. And she never wanted to sit down or, you know, have the conversation. So, like I said, I had no right to, you know, stop paying, you know. But, you know, it kind of just frustrated me because I know I really want to be here. Okay. So they're disconnected. There, There's no connection between, between oh, okay, I'm going to pay child support or mom, you know, not letting you see your child. So it starts with you stepping up and being consistent on providing your child support. That's where it starts, okay? It starts with you just providing for your child. How much did you give towards school uniforms? 650. Okay. And when did you make that payment? Um, I checked my uh, receipt earlier. Uh, just to give you the... Hold on, my service will... July 3rd. Of last year. Yes. If I can share my screen, I can show you if you need to see it. No, no, no. That's still more than 30 days past due. The goal for me is to get you on track so I don't have to issue a criminal warrant. So, All so, right, that's fine. So, so what we need to do is just say, okay, I understand. Now, if you want to be in your daughter's life, that's what I told you. You can You both live in DeKalb County. You can go down to the um, magistrate court of DeKalb County. I mean, uh, the court in downtown, they have a location called the Family Law Information Center. You can pay, I think, thirty or forty-five dollars to speak with an attorney, but you really don't have to do that. You can just pay to get the paperwork. It's a low cost. You file it yourself. You just have to pay the filing fees. You follow. Hold on one second. If you haven't done it yet, you file, you file a petition to legitimate your child, and and the court will give you your own visitation rights with your daughter. And it doesn't matter if Miss Simmons wants you to see her or not, but you have to take the step. So go ahead. I'll, what What did you want to say? Um. Basically, all right. My daughter turns five this upcoming Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, the day before her birthday last year, I got a letter in the mail talking because I tried to get my daughter legitimized. They sent me a letter in the mail talking about they couldn't track her mother down. And it took them three months for them to tell me that after me paying the application oh. fee and everything, you know. Huh. And okay, I'm like, so she stays she stays 10 minutes away from, you know, so I don't see how hard, you know, it'd be to track her down. I'm like, this is something I know I want to do. I just need her to, you know, agree upon it, you know. Wow. OK, so. It, I'm, I'm not accusing you, Ms. Simmons, but sometimes people can avoid service so they don't get served for the action. Um, like you said, Mr. Denson, this is between the two of you. Clearly, whatever the issue is, it's a deep-rooted issue that if mom's deciding I don't want you in my daughter's life, I'm not saying that's what you're doing, Ms. Simmons, but if, you're, if you are in avoiding service and he's trying to see his child, it's better for you guys to work it out because if, you, if, you're, if he's not able to, you don't have any input if for some reason a judge decides to go forward saying they can't find you, they can publish it in a newspaper and he can go and get full custody. So it's in everybody's best interest. If he's already filed the action for you to acknowledge service and you guys go to a judge and you work things out between the two of you, if not, Miss Simmons, you're not going to have any say so. He can find an attorney and they could guide him on how to do it in a process where if you're avoiding service, then fine, avoid it. But you won't have any input of what a judge does with regard to the visitation of your child. So what he's saying, he's already filed it. The marshals tried serving you. You're avoiding service, it appears. And because you're avoid, even though this isn't my, this isn't what this is about, but if he wants to step up and if I get him on the child support, then it's only fair that he has, he has visitation with his daughter. So that's up to either you guys work it out. And clearly you can't work it out because you're here because she could have texted you and say, hey, you, you know, can you get consistent on your child support? And she could have easily, you could have easily told him, hey, baby girl has this thing. And why don't we give you visitation every other weekend or whatever, whatever. But this is all the result of two people that no longer care for each other. I'm sorry, I have to say that and make that assumption. But, you know, it is what it is. So either you guys figure out how you can work together moving forward to have a better relationship. Because there's this little video that I always see of a little girl just saying, I just want everybody to be to get along because the child is not in the middle of this. The child could care less about money and could care less about parties, parents' differences. And I, it takes a lot to get parents to push through that. But if I could have it, look, your daughter here before me, she would say, I want to see my daddy. And daddy, I need money to go on field trips and stuff like that. So I'm just saying, you know, everybody's got to deal with their own stuff. But um so you could go back to the marshals one more time, ask them to serve her again. And um, uh, if the case is pending or Miss Simmons, so you have input, you could go down to the court 
and look at it and, and acknowledge service and the judge will put it on a hearing. They'll send you guys to mediation to try to work out visitation as the both of you agree, but pretty much the visitations every other weekend, two weeks during the summer, two to four weeks during the summer, every other Thanksgiving, every other December, unless Mr. Denson, unless you're abusive to the child or you've done some type of uh, criminal offense that would put the child in danger, then the judge will give you visitation. Okay. But you have to step up to it. So that's my little um, comments on that situation. So let's move forward. Is that uh, when did you file the petition to legitimate your daughter? Uh, it was, like I said, it took them three months to get back to me. So I believe it was November of 2022 okay. or the end of October. The case should still be pending. So you can just go back to the marshal's office and, and, you know, make sure the file is still there. It should be. And then ask him to serve mom again. Um, um, at the address, I don't know what address you have. Are you visiting your daughter at all in person? I'm not allowed to. She actually can cannot come get her from school and stuff, but her mom says she don't want to talk about it when I try to talk about it. So, And I okay. actually have my own car and transportation now, so I thought it would make it easier. Okay, so your license is probably suspended. Let's check on that. Mr. Mina Camarillo, can we look at the status of his license? It is suspended. Okay, so Mr. Simmons, your license is suspended, and in order to reinstate your license, you're going to have to pay 20% of what's past due. I mean, you're not past due. This shows you're barely past. I mean, you do have three or four months past due, but you can easily clean this up. You can just go in and pay whatever they ask, 20, 30% and reinstate your license right away. And then you just have right. to be consistent with their payments. So you really need to call them today and say, okay. what do I need to do? Because your license is suspended. And you know, that just goes spiraling downhill. So with that being said, um, do you make sufficient money as a photographer to continue to pay your child support uh, going forward, it looks like you're supposed to be paying a total of three ninety, which is close to four hundred. I would just pay four hundred, and you should pay either a hundred dollars a week or two hundred every other week, which is your preference. So I can make a note of how you're going to be paying going forward, so I don't issue a warrant. I can do a hundred a week. Okay. I thought it was three twenty five, but I guess what they went up, they added the sixty five. Or yeah, the, yeah, that's right, that's right. To okay. try to pay, try to because your license is suspended. So if you call them today, ask them. Just pay what you're supposed to pay, but ask them, what do I need to pay to reinstate my license? And how much is it generally, Ms. Serena Camarillo, how much is it? It's, it's what your honor says, 20% or three times um, um, the monthly obligation, whichever's higher. Oh, whichever's higher? I thought it was whichever's lower, but the, the notes that are in, in the <laughs> system right now say whichever's higher. Oh. So, Mr. Denson, that means you're probably going to have to pay like $900 or something to get it reinstated. Um, but you can work you with said how much? Probably nine hundred, but you're going right. to have to you're going to have to pay with child support, and they do take credit cards. So if you have a family member or yourself, if you could charge on a credit card, they let you take care of it that way, and then you could pay yourself back or pay a family member back or whomever. But you'll at least be caught up, your license reinstated, check on the status of your pending case, and then you'll be back on track with us. And then hopefully, mom will say, okay, well he's providing child support, um, so I'll you know go ahead and acknowledge service, but. Uh, I don't want to get in that too much, but let me talk to mom for a minute. All right, Ms. Simmons, did you see where the marshals were trying to serve you with the notice of the petition to legitimate your daughter? Um, I did. Well, I wasn't in town during the time that um, there were there were notices being left at my door and my neighbor actually informed me of them, um, but never was served by an officer um, themselves and never got any follow-up on what well, they do. they tried to serve you so they tried to serve you you were not they weren't able to serve you they, they usually try three months i don't know if you were gone for two or three months out of town but i'm just being honest with you there are mechanisms that he can find that will avoid those show you're avoiding service and you're not going to know so you can just go down there and tell them you want to acknowledge you just go to the marshal's office go downstairs i mean it's he's not suing you for he just wants visitation so either you you have to do both mr denson you go back and ask them to serve her that she was out allegedly out of town and then, uh, Ms. Simmons, I strongly encourage you to consider it because if the judge finds you're avoiding service, then they can do some other type of legal action posted in a newspaper and you won't know. And that's up to you. So avoiding and it. Another thing. Is not, is not I'm sorry happen. for cutting off, Judge. Oh, that's OK. Go ahead. Um, another thing is I previously had a TPO in place for me and my daughter during that time. So um, November 23, November oh. 2022, I'm sorry, but. Until November 2023, I had a temporary protective order for myself and my daughter. Um, and during that process, 
um, the option for visitation was extended and denied. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that overrides that. Okay. Well, um, certainly I don't want to put you or your daughter in jeopardy, but a judge still needs to decide if he's going to be entitled to visitation throughout her life. This is a long-term situation. Okay. Since you had a protective order, then um, that you could have still gone to court. The judge would have handled that in superior court. The protective orders are handled by in a protective mechanism and the superior court handles all of those, but our court handles the delivery of the uh, the granting of the protective orders and the superior court would decide if that's going to be uh, a one-year ban, a two-year ban, or, you know, no contact whatsoever. Uh, if, so, Mr. Denson, while you guys are going through the process, uh, my recommendation is be very cautious of anything. Now, the protective orders, is it not in place anymore, Ms. Simmons? No, it expired in November of 2023, oh. so it was for a year. Okay, so Mr. Denton, uh, whenever there's a protective order involved, you know, that means there's some act of, of a concern and a judge determined that it was in the best interest of your daughter and uh, Miss Simmons to, to not let you have any contact. But now that it's expired, you can have contact. I just want to encourage you not to make any threats, not to on the phone, a text, not to be aggressive, just nothing mean spirited. Just say, okay, let's see if we can move forward. You know, no acts of violence, eat threats or anything like that, because that's going to land you right in jail or it's going to, you know, go back to a protective order. So let me just, um, uh, let me just check something. I'll be right back with you guys. So anyway, so Mr. Denson, what I'm looking for <clears throat> with you is to continue uh, to provide your weekly payments. I'm going to put here that states he will pay. So when is the last time the two of you, if you don't mind me asking, were in a relationship? Was it recently or was it way back from when your daughter was born, Miss Simmons? Way back from when she was born. Oh, okay. Probably like around before she turned two. Oh, okay. All right. So you guys have not been in a relationship for two years. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. All right. So because this is a criminal matter, Mr. Denson, um, I'm, I'm also going to make here, put here, dad needs to call DHS, DCSS to reinstate his license. Okay. And like, I would do that today. <laughs> If you can find a credit card to put it on or go in and make a payment because I wouldn't drive to Miller Road if I were you because the scanners will stop and show you just been lucky that nothing's happened. But, you know, now that it's out there in the universe, you you would get stopped if you're driving on a suspended license. OK, so I put here dad states he will pay 100 um, weekly. Uh, Mom will consider accepting services for legitimation. You can go back and try to serve her again, Mr. Denson, pay the fees to, re to serve her again. Uh, dad needs to call DCSS to reinstate his license. Um, case is reset to, if you guys can make a note, same time, same place. Uh, let me correct this here. And again, I, I'm not, Miss um, Simmons, if you feel unsafe, I'm not forcing you to be around him or to see your daughter if you're concerned about her safety for some reason. But now that it's expired, if you guys want to try to dig deep when you were in a relationship before you had her and see if you guys can work out something a little bit at a time, then that would be better, especially if he starts paying child support to where you have more, you know, input on, on what should be done with her. Um, so with that being said, we'll reset the case to the 29th of March. Uh, we'll see you guys then. And um, uh, that's it, sir. I'll be looking at you paying, hold on one second for me, sir. I'll look at you paying $100 a week starting next week immediately. But listen, if child support makes you make a lump sum payment for this month, then you don't have to pay for this month, okay? Meaning if you pay eight or 900, whatever they tell you to pay for this month, you don't, you just pay that. Don't pay that plus the 100 a week. Start paying the 100 a week um, in, in May so we can see the consistent child support. Um, just a minute, hold on, let me change my video here. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can't go 30 days without a payment. That's why I suggest paying weekly. They're going to need a lump sum to reinstate your license. So then that'll cover you um, for the month of February, and then you just start paying 100 a week starting in March, okay? And what is your question? Um, I understand, uh, you know, the TPO was put on me because I did show up at her residence um, unannounced, but well, wait, I showed wait, up. Listen. Mr. Huh? Denson, let, let's not get into that, okay? Oh, no, no, no. I was, I was, I was just about to ask a question because, I, you know, I had dropped off my daughter birthday gifts, and I was just going to say, ask her, you know, I'm on FaceTime with all of you all, is there any way I could see my daughter for her fifth birthday? You know, I've only seen her one okay. birthday. So so hold on a second. We're not going to do air this on uh, live on YouTube. Um, I, um, we're not going to do that. So what, I, what I'm going to do, this is unusual. I'm going to let uh, my 
just to be a neutral person. I don't know, Miss Serena Kimberly, if you just don't mind. I don't want you guys talking. Um, well, can't you guys just talk um, out of core and instead of putting mom under pressure in core? Come I on, mean, guys. You guys have to get along. You've got 16, 15 years to raise a baby in the rest of your life. Um, Miss Simmons, are you open to just talking to him uh, privately in um, court in a different breakout room to see if you guys can talk or if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then we won't. I'm sorry. You can unmute for me, please. I said that isn't something that I'm comfortable doing today. Okay. All right. Well, you guys can text each other and I'm sure your daughter would be happy if she saw her daddy on her birthday. So um, again, I don't know what, what the level of violence was before, so I'm not going to get into that, Mr. Denson. Mom's being protective and you guys have to work that out. So you've asked and it's up to her to think about it. And if not, go back and get your paperwork done because the judge will give you visitation with your daughter unless it's, again, you've done something to your daughter. Usually the protective order is, is, is for mom. And because mom has the child, they say no contact with the child, but that's not going to override your right to visitation, generally speaking. Okay. So I hope you consider it, Miss Simmons. Again, I've been doing this forever. If you feel your daughter would be happy to see her daddy taken into consideration. What? It's going to be in public with people. You can't do anything. And if you offer him that grace to be able to see her, think how she will feel. And if she would feel joy and know that you let her see her daddy for her birthday, I think it's something that I think you should just both consider. Okay. I don't have, if I could say it, I would order it, but it's not in my, it's not in my, um, uh, my jurisdiction to handle anything regarding visitation guys. Okay. All right. So we'll see you guys back. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. I hope you get to see her. I hope mom considers it and um, uh, just watch any screaming, yelling, you know, anything like that. And if it doesn't happen, Mr. Denson, then take a deep breath and then f go back and file your paperwork and you'll be able to have her every other year for her birthday going forward. OK, that's what the court systems do. All right, guys. OK, All I right. hope it, I hope it works out. OK, you guys take care of your excuse from court and. Happy birthday to your daughter, and I hope you guys can work it out. I really do. Take care, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. I do. I do. Okay. Um, in this case, you guys can go ahead and mute yourselves for me, please. Um, let's see. I've got the wrong case up here. Give me a moment. You guys have a two-year-old child. Mom lived in DeKalb County with that child. Um, you both live in DeKalb County. Dad, you're under an order to pay four seventy-seven per month. They're not sure of what's past due. It looks like that's being adjudicated. It looks like you have paid. It looks like you're paying every two weeks. You're right on track for child support. I don't know what happened or why we are here. Maybe you missed a payment. I don't know. It says, well, it says mom says she received no money at all ever from you. That's what I'm showing. I'll let mom testify about that. I don't know if you just started paying. If this, if this is a new order, I'm not sure. So give me one moment. Miss Red, um, I'm not sure you put here that you've never receive any money and you have an order for 477 um when you say you've never received since the when was your child support order established the order was established we went to court for legitimation legitimization back in june and so it was established to be in as of july 1st and okay. in the order i was to give him the account and routing number for him to put the money in and from that point on i gave i did as the order said which was to give him the account and routing number i gave it to him as a printout from the bank and then a few uh, a month or two later, he asked me again for the number and I asked him what happened to it. And he told me that he misplaced it. So I sent it to him, the accountant writing number via text. Um, and I waited. I didn't you know, bother with him or anything because I really didn't want to take it through the child support system because I know if you get behind, it would suspend his license or lock him up. So by November, this is from July to November, he had not done anything. Okay. All right. And so, so that's have... why is that now as of recent, when we went to court on Tuesday for the uh, legit the contempt for the legitimization, he had already started making payments. Okay, for the legitimation. Um, I know a lot of people call it legitimization, but it's just. I'm sorry. Okay, so you guys have a legitimation order uh, for Jordan. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So yes, Mr. Fox, you're here because you exactly what she said. There's been we're not showing any payments until recently. I'm not sure because you're probably going to have July, August, September, October, November, December, January. You're going to have seven months past due. And then what they're going to do is um, add an additional amount to <clears throat> to pay off that set those seven months unless you have the ability to pay it off or your taxes may be intercepted. So mom had no choice to file because there were no payments due, but it looks like you're exactly on track. 
Um, the only issue is I like to know, make from my notes, you know, what um, are you self-employed? Because it looks like you're making the payments voluntarily when we usually try to get them directly out of your paycheck. And mom's right. Once you're past 60 days, they automatically suspend your driver's license. So she was trying to work with you out. You didn't bite the bullet at the time. So she did what she had to do. And, and it does, it's not out of malice or anything, but just you didn't step up and pay. So with this, are you currently employed, um, Mr. Uh, let me, Mr. Fox? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's 299. So I'll be making my payments um, directly to through the app, through the DC okay. SS app. Okay. And I can see that you're paying currently paying every two weeks. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll try to do it weekly, though. <clears throat> If you do it weekly, you just divide it by four. The issue is, is that because it's all, already six months past due, I don't know what they're going to do about your driver's license if it's already suspended. Miss Arena Camarillo, what's the status of his driver's license? Oh, she didn't have a child support case yet. Yeah, I don't. I, yes, Your Honor, he's been he's been paying. I don't think he has any driver's license issues with us. Have okay. you gotten any mail about your license, Mister Fox? No, ma'am. Not that I believe. Um, I was hoping that was not the case at all. Uh, no, but no, ma'am, I have not. Honor. He's paid. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm going to double check right now, of course. Okay. So, but she just opened our a, a DHSS case. Probably yeah, we, we don't have it. Okay. And, okay. So, but when they post the person, that, the person that was on the uh, things, the, the person from defects that was on the um, thing with us on Tuesday when we went for the, the contempt, contempt said that there was a date coming. So we haven't gotten anything from, from that, from your office yet, Miss um, Erica. Okay, so what's going to happen, <clears throat> which I'm concerned about, Mr. Fox, is they're going to post that past due amount of, <clears throat> excuse me, it's about $2,862 is what I'm looking at. I'm not, you know, just generally. Then once that post, it may impact your driver's license. So make sure you communicate with, with the child support agency to try to, to make sure that you try to cure that past due amount so you don't get a, especially if you're self-employed, I don't know if you're driving construction, but boom, like that, your car will be scanned license suspended because they sent it to your last known address that's on your driver's license and they don't have an address and it just just goes downhill from that okay your car is impounded you're taken into custody it's not worth all that if you can try to make sure you stay on top of that okay so that i'll put here dad is self-employed uh payments are being made bi-monthly um since you just started paying again, Mr. Fox, I have to reset the case at least one time to make sure that you're consistent. And then I'll dismiss the case. It looks like you're going to step it up, which I appreciate. Yes, ma'am. And you guys have a legitimation order for your child. So that's good. So let's check in on um <clears throat> let's check in on April 26th. Make sure your payments are consistent. And if they're consistent, uh then then it will be dismissed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is there any way of me getting that contact information for DCSS mm -hmm. so that way mm -hmm. I can make sure that my license doesn't get suspended due to the past uh, rears that I, obviously that I have? And I was only able to pay due to I didn't really have a good job at all. And now that I have a little piece of better job, I'm able to pay now. So, uh, yeah, I definitely need my license in order to keep okay. making payments. <clears throat> and what would have been better is for you to communicate with mom and just tell her that. So then you wouldn't be here. You really? know what I mean? You got, wait, 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 let me meet you, Mr. Red. I mean, it would have, I mean, let me meet you. It would have, you know, this is where communication is. You guys have, you're both parents. You may be in other relationships, but you still need to talk, uh, text. You don't have to talk, just text, you know, because now you're going to have rights to visitation. You guys have to work out who's picking the child up when. And this is for the next, for the rest of your life, but at least 16 years while your child, I don't know if Jordan's a girl or a boy, but while Jordan's in school. So <laughs> communication's a key. And I'll see you guys. On April 26th, and uh, Miss Arena Camarillo, I'll put uh, you guys in a breakout room. Your Honor, I've already chatted to him the website, and that has all the different various ways he can communicate with us. There are a lot of different ways, so we can choose okay. what's best. Okay, sounds good. But you figured out how to pay online, so we appreciate that. Okay, all right. So we'll see you guys April. Um, what did I say? 26th. Is that right? Yes, yes ma'am. April 26th, yes. and if everything's consistent and your payments are are fine, then the case will be dismissed. Okay. But we get another email much. for a um for that yeah, one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Okay, take care. Bye bye. All right, guys. Take care. Bye bye.